The New York Islanders have played without three of their top defensemen, Scott Mayfield, Adam Pellick, Ryan Polak, and yet they keep finding ways to win. But who plays and who sits when everybody gets healthy? We're going to talk about that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Tuesday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Well, I hope everybody who celebrates had a very Merry Christmas and uh, enjoyed the holiday. And for those of you who don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you enjoyed the extra day off and a three-day weekend. We have got a lot to get to on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic, you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, feel free to send us an email. The email address locked on Islanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You could also follow the show on X at locked on Isles. And you could follow me, Gil Martin on X at ice wars, N Y R V S N Y I. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season long. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So make sure you join me for instant insight and analysis. And it's uh, always great to talk a little Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. So one question that a lot of people have been asking, and understandably so, is what happens when all of the Islanders defensemen are healthy? And it's a legitimate question because somehow, despite missing three of their top six, the Islanders have found ways to win consistently without Ryan Pollock, Adam Pellick, and Scott Mayfield. And remember, Mayfield was in the lineup. Sebastian Ajo was hurt. And then as soon as Ajo returned, Mayfield one game later out of the lineup. So it's been a while that the Islanders have not had their top six defensemen available to them. And look, no question about it. It is affecting the way this team plays hockey. And I think that one of the reasons that Lane Lambert has been a little bit more offensive minded is in part because of the cast of defensemen that he has and the defensive defensemen that he doesn't have available. And therefore he feels he has to change his style. Now we know Lane Lambert always wanted the defensemen to be a little more involved offensively than say Barry Trotz used to. That's a low bar, but no question that is the case. So look, as of recent games, the combinations have been Noah Dobson and Alexander Romanov as the top pair. Romanov, more of a defensive-oriented guy, more physical, although he has been hitting opposing teams less often this last few weeks. And I think that has helped him a little bit because he hasn't been out of position as much. Sometimes when Alexander Romanov goes in for that big hit, he ends up putting himself out of position defensively. The second pair has been Mike Riley and Sebastian Ajo. And then the third pair, Samuel Bolduc and Robert Bartuzzo. And again, I have to give credit to Lane Lam, uh, to Lou Lamorello for picking up Mike Riley on waivers and acquiring Robert Bortuzzo for a seventh round draft pick because 
these two additions have really helped solidify the defense in the interim uh, while, you know, you're dealing with the loss of three of your top six. So if you get all three of them back, Adam Pellick, Ryan Pollock, Scott Mayfield, who plays, who sits, and what does it mean as far as options for Lou Lamorello come the trade deadline are concerned? Because barring a major slump, when the trade deadline gets here, the Islanders will probably still be in the hunt for the playoffs. And the question becomes, does the addition of all these extra defensemen give Lou Lamorello some opportunities at the trade deadline. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show. Let's get this much out of the way right away. When Adam Pellick, Ryan Pollock, and Scott Mayfield return, they are going to be back in the lineup. Mayfield has six and a half years left on his deal. Pellick and Pollock are bedrocks of this defense core. And they are guys who are going to give you minutes, who are at least role-wise and on paper among the better defensive defensemen that you have. They used to be your shutdown pair up until midway through last year. And, you know, when they're healthy, these guys are going to play. Uh, No one is benching Noah Dobson. I doubt anybody is benching Alexander Romanov. That means that you've got five spots already taken up. And let's let's do it this way. Dobson, Pollock, and Mayfield are right shot defensemen. Romanov, Riley, Aho. Bolduc, Pellick, left shot defenseman. So you want to have a balance, all right? You, you, you obviously ideally want three of each, although clearly, you know, right now the Islanders are only playing with two right shot defensemen and somebody is playing on the off, you know, opposite side of what they normally play. That's not ideal, but it's doable. And obviously, you know, there will be in-between times. I mean, right now, Pellick is on LTIR. So he's probably out longer than Pollock or Mayfield. And, you know, there'll likely be a time when Mayfield is back, but Pellick and Pollock aren't. Or Pollock is back, Mayfield and Pellick are not. Pellick is probably going to be the one who comes back last. Again, they're not practicing during this holiday break. So impossible to get an update during this time, but we'll see when any of these guys begin skating again and are ready to return to the lineup. But realistically, let's talk first about what the new guys have brought. Mike Riley, I think, adds a very important factor to this team. He is very good at the transition game between the defensive zone and the offensive zone. He gets the puck out. He has helped them improve a bit in this area. And while it's still happening, we are seeing three, four minutes at a time in the defensive zone less frequently than we have been beforehand. Bortuzzo adds size and physicality. I think it's safe to say that Mayfield is likely to replace Bortuzzo in the lineup uh, when Mayfield, also a right-handed shot, comes back. So Bortuzzo has, you know, again, added that physical and size dimension, and he can certainly give you depth that this team before the season had started, rather, they didn't have. So those are the two new guys. That's what they've added. But now the question becomes, when Pellick and Pollock are healthy, who 
else sits. We're going to break that down and discuss that a little bit more coming up next. Plus, we'll also have our Islanders birthday of the day, a center who was with the Islanders for three seasons in the late 80s. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We're going to have all that still to come on today's Locked on Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is super easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options like spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. And look, it's not just the NFL. You could also place your bet on college football bowl season. You've got college basketball. You've got the NBA. And yes, you could use your knowledge of the Islanders to bet on FanDuel. Check out the odds for the Islanders upcoming game on Wednesday against the Pittsburgh Penguins. That's a big metropolitan division matchup. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So when everybody's healthy, Pellick, Pollock, Mayfield, who sits? I think at this point, you're looking at Riley as a possibility. I think Bartuzo sits when Mayfield is healthy. And then it's a question of Riley, Aho, Bolduke. Two of those three are likely to sit. And it becomes a question of who. I think Aho would make a lot of sense. I think Riley could play ahead of Aho. I think he's a little smoother at this point in his career, a little more consistent defensively than Aho is. Uh, but again, that may come down to how well Aho plays during this time period when everybody is still injured. Uh, and also how well Riley plays as long as he's in the lineup. And you look at the numbers right now. Since joining the Islanders, Mike Riley, in 13 games, has two goals and seven points. Keep in mind, that's about a 43-point pace if you give him 82 games, give or take. I'm doing the math off the top of my head. He is a minus three and plus minus and has only taken three minor penalties in 13 games with the Islanders. Keep in mind, Mike Riley right now, has the same number of goals as Oliver Wallstrom in five less games and has two more assists and has a better plus minus by two. So again, to just to give you an idea of what Riley is able to give you, uh, it makes a difference. And I think Riley should stay in the lineup. And to me, you, you, you sit Aho, you sit Bolduc, you sit Bortuzzo, and I think you stick with the other three. Now, the other aspect of it is this trade deadline. What does this team need? What gets them to the difference between where they are now, which is a you know, a team fighting for playoff positioning, but not a lot to make the playoffs. I mean, again, right now. Seven points separate the second place Islanders from the seventh place Penguins. And we're not even halfway through the season yet. Do you get that elite scoring sniper to put on a line with Bo and Barzi? Possible, but that costs money. You need to open up cap space. Is it possible that you get a penalty killing specialist or a shootout specialist? Shootout. Specialists won't help you in the playoffs, but might help you get there. 
and could add a little offense. The penalty kill, it's dead last in the league. Here's the news, though. It is possible that you have some players that you can trade to free up some cap space. And yeah, Pellick and Pollock both have these no trade clauses, but they could waive them. Cap relief, 5.75 million for Pellick, 6.15 million for Pollock. That money, if traded, could free up enough space to get, you know, not both of them, but one of them would be enough cap space to get you a sniper, whether as a rental or maybe possibly because you have so many more years on these deals as a long-term addition. You also, you know, could look to trade either Riley or Bortuzzo You're not going to get the same kind of return for those guys as you get for Pellick or Pollock, but you are going to be able to get something perhaps for them, maybe a penalty killer. You could probably get a solid penalty killer for Mike Riley or Robert Bortuzzo, a bottom six forward who specializes in the PK and can get your penalty kill closer to respectability rather than dead last in the league. My point is, that this lineup all of a sudden has more possibilities. And, you know, if you look at it as Romanoff, Riley, and Pellick would be your left shot defensemen, Dobson, Mayfield, and Pollock would be your right shot defensemen. Uh, it, 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 that's an interesting group. And I think Bolduc can go back to being the seventh guy or the eighth guy. And Aho could go back to being the seventh guy or the eighth guy. Uh, and then you have that option of trading one or more guys in, in order to maybe improve this team in some other areas. The point is Lou Lamorello all of a sudden has options and he has possibly some assets that are either expendable or that can free up some real cap space or that you can take the depth that all of a sudden this team has on the blue line and translate it into a goal scorer or a penalty killer or something else that this team really does need. The options are out there and it is intriguing to think about what this team could accomplish uh, if they make the right trade. So what will Lou Lamorello do? I think as much as Lou Lamorello likes the core of this team and wants to keep it together, he's not stupid. I mean, you could say you don't like his philosophy. I'm critical of it. Every day, you know I'm critical of it very often. But Lou Lamorello understands the age of this team and understands that the window for this core group to win is going to be limited and that even if he wants to keep Bo and Barzi and Pellick and Sorokin and, you know, Nelson, some of these core guys together for another few years, changes are going to be, have to be made to get this team younger. Whether it's this year or next year, it's got to be done. And here's an opportunity with this sudden acquisition of defense depth. You're nine deep right now on the blue line, and you need seven or eight. You can make a move to make this team better, to improve the cap situation, to balance out the talent. You can make a big splash or a small splash. But either way, the ability to make this happen is out there. And now it becomes a question of whether or not Lou Lamorello will get it done. We've got more to get to on today's show. We're going to talk about the Metropolitan Division because, like I said, seven points separate the second-place Islanders and the seventh-place Penguins. It's going to be one heck of a finish, and I'm looking forward to seeing it. 
We've got that and our Islanders birthday of the day still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, comedy, music, theater, and all those great events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. My favorite thing about Game Time, you go on the app, you can actually see the view from your seat before you purchase the tickets, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. And Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it starts, it is the place to find last-minute seats. So. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L O C K E D O N N H L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Let's talk Metropolitan Division, folks. It is an interesting race. Right now, the Rangers in first place, 47 points in 32 games. They got a six-point cushion on the Islanders, and the Rangers have a game in hand. It won't be easy to catch the Rangers, but still with, you know, 50 games left for the Rangers, 49 for the Islanders, not impossible. Philadelphia just one point behind the Islanders, even in games played. 40 points in 33 games. The Capitals have two games in hand on both Philadelphia and the Islanders, and they're two points back. The Caps going to be in this dogfight a little while longer for sure. The Carolina Hurricanes are sort of really a mystery, but bad, not bad, let's say inconsistent goaltending has really hurt them. They have 38 points. They are three points behind the Islanders, but the Islanders have a game in hand on the Hurricanes. And again, while I really think Rod Brindamore is a great coach and that they play that puck possession game that is difficult to play against, if they don't get their goaltending straightened out and play better team defense in front of their goaltending, they are going to continue to struggle. The Devils right now, Five points behind the New York Islanders. Devils have a game in hand. The Devils also kind of surprising that they're struggling the way they are. And, you know, for the Devils, it's been goals against. And again, it's defense, it's goaltending. Neither of their top goaltenders have a save percentage of 90 or above. But I don't think that they're going to stay, you know, struggle as much as they have throughout the rest of the year. And that's definitely, you know, makes them dangerous. And then the Pittsburgh Penguins, 34 points. They are seven points behind the Islanders. Pittsburgh has a game in hand, but let's, let's be honest here. The Pittsburgh Penguins, they're a top 10 team in goals against eighth in the league, but they're 28th in goals scored and 27th on the power play. And if I would have told you before the season started that a team with Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, Eric Carlson, Chris Letang, uh, you know, all of these talented, Jake uh, Gunsel, all these guys would be 28th in the league in goals scored and 27th in the league on the power play. I think you would have given me some pretty darn good odds. My point is that there is no easy opponent in this division. The only team 
that I would say is more or less out of contention right now is the Columbus Blue Jackets. And what it also means, getting back to the possibility of Lou Lamorello making a move between now and the trade deadline, the Islanders will need to be aggressive and address their shortcomings. Again, to me, the two big ones right now, a sniper and someone to help kill penalties, they have got to address those if they hope to make the playoffs and avoid being in the wild card race, but to be either first, second, or third in the division. But again, that question in my mind that is kind of hanging over everything when it comes to this team right now with the three defensemen out, and I guess we're making this conversation come full circle, they have played a much more wide open style of hockey than what we're used to seeing from the New York Islanders in recent years. In the playoffs, that system will not work. And so can Lane Lambert and this Islanders team go out and make the adjustments they need stylistically, whether it's to get into the playoffs or to win in the playoffs if they make it. That's going to be one of the keys to this season. And one other thing, when putting all of this information about the defensemen into the hat, One thing that I think has to be taken into account when all is said and done is the amount of ice time that certain Islanders players are getting on the blue line, especially Noah Dobson. Dobson is playing more and more minutes, and they will wear him down if he's still playing 28, 29, 30 minutes a game by the time we get to March, April, hopefully May, June, you don't want to burn out Dauber or Romanov or Pelik or Polak or any of these guys, but you, especially right now, Dobson and Romanov, who have been just getting monster minutes recently, you got to pace them and you got to pace your goaltenders because you don't want to end up with a situation where you get to the playoffs and your team can't perform because they're out of gas. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And well, basically Wednesday will be the 52nd birthday of former Islanders center, Brian Smolinski. And uh, Smolinski, interesting to note, He was originally a first-round pick of the Boston Bruins, 21st overall back in 1990. Went to Michigan State, where he had two 30-goal seasons in 44 and 40 games, respectively. Made his NHL debut with the Bruins in 92-93 after he finished his eligibility at Michigan State. Later played for the Penguins and then came to the Islanders for 96-97. 97, 98, and 98, 99 before playing for the Kings, the Senators, the Blackhawks, the Canucks, and the Canadians, and then spent a couple of years in the minors to close out his pro career. Smolinski made it to 1,000 NHL games, 1,056 to be exact, 274 goals, 377 assists, 651 points, add 123 playoff games, 23 goals, 52 points, in those for Smolinski and, uh, you know, did not win a Stanley Cup, but boy, did he come close a couple of times during his NHL career. We're going to go back and look at one of his better games as an Islander. How about this one? January 28th, 1998 at the Nassau Coliseum Islanders hosting the Flyers. Flyers going with uh, Garth Snow in goal, although he would later be replaced by Ron Hextall. So two guys who had uh, Islander connections and Tommy Sallow, the goalie for the Islanders. And in this game, our Islanders birthday of the day, Brian Smolinski, three assists to help pace the team. Uh, He had three assists. Ziggy Palfi had a hat trick and an assist for four points and the Islanders crushed the Flyers, by a final score of 6-1. 
to one. Smolinski assisting Palfi in the first period, assisting Kenny Janssen in the second period, and Tom Chorsky in the third as the Islanders down the Flyers six to one. So happy birthday a day early to Brian Smolinski. He is our Islanders birthday of the day. Thanks again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We will have our weekly farm report on all things Bridgeport Islanders. And we'll preview Wednesday's game against the Pittsburgh Penguins as the Islanders return to the ice. So join us for that and a lot more. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.